Open Sound Control is a protocol used for communication between devices and as the name suggests it's often audio devices but it turns out that a lot of other applications also integrate this very straightforward protocol and one of them is QLab and today we'll look at how QLab can be controlled with a Skahoy controller. So those of you who doesn't know QLab it's used in, in event and theater applications for firing cues for light sound and uh, video. So this is what we'll see right here and in QLab I have set up eight sound effects that I can uh, trigger and uh, be, be used in such a, an event performance. So let's just press the space bar and you'll see that it plays back an audio effect in this case. But it can also be controlled from the Skahoy controller. So on the um, Crosspoint 24 that I brought here which is a very nice button interface for working with QLab network one PoE cable so it doesn't have to be close to your computer which is one of the main advantages or not main advantages but is one of the built-in advantages of Skahoy controllers that they are networked and can be placed anywhere you want um, even if they control a computer. So here we see that this button also fires the same cue and the second button will fire the next one in the list and so forth. So it's very very useful and, and typical that a Skyro controller will be uh, desired to do such integration and keep in mind that they are powerful enough to also control other stuff. So you um, you may not only have a Skyro controller to control QLab, you may have it hooked up with uh, uh, cameras and video switches or router or, or something else but you want a few buttons or row of buttons to send cues into to QLab. And as you can see it is done for these eight buttons that will simply trigger every one of the eight sound effects that I have added here. Okay so that's a little bit too much for me right now so I will just press less on these buttons. But um, apart from firing the cues you can also stop them again. So let's just pick one of the longer ones. Uh, it sounds like number seven music is, is more pleasant than the evil laughter. So let's press number seven and we have music playing. So the button just above this one is going to stop that from happening. So I press this one and it stops again. Okay, so that's how simple it really is. We can send these cues into QLab and it, it reacts on it and so on. If we look at the display of the controller you can see the queue name, the, the path or the address of the queue is shown in the display. And now we'll turn our eyes to, to how this is configured in the uh, configuration of the panel. So I will bring up the Skahoy firmware updater and press the button local configuration. I already had it open so I'll just press it once again and now it opens up the web interface of the controller here. And um, it looks like this and I already have the first three buttons selected on the controller and that will give you a window into how easy it was to set up actions for this one. You see the, the action uh, on button number one is called send string and the string it sends is string number zero and um, then the value string and you don't need to care about that in this case is, is set to zero. Um, the, the label we see in the display is set to show the path of the address of the um, OSC string here uh, and that is exactly what you see right there. So um, th the main question for us right now is because we can see that we are sending strings 0, 1 and 2 where are those strings defined? That is actually very easy if you scroll down to the device core options section you see that in, um, in this case we have defined a number of rows um, and one column with strings and it is simply a reference into uh, these rows when you select those paths. So you can see the first eight of these are Q1 up to 8 and then follows Q1 up to 8 for the stop command and that is exactly what we get on the keys here. You can see the first three keys selects pass uh, string number zero. They are zero indexed so starting with zero, one, two and so on. If I go to key number eight we see pass string seven. If we go to the keys just above we see string number eight then follows nine and if we pick the last one out here it should be um, 15, eight, nine and then 15 eventually. So there's um, really obvious correspondence between the addresses that I've entered into the um, device call options and then the ones selected for the command we sent. So very very easy to do this 
And um, you can also send other things than that. You can, for instance, select binary. If you do that, then all you do is really select only the path and then it's going to send you a zero or one to understand what is going on under the surface, basically on the message level. There's an application called protocol and we see it right here. This application can run instead of QLab. So you need to quit QLab to create, uh, to leave room for protocol to have its own OSC server running. So I now enabled it and you can see that it's connected because the Skaho controller tries to connect to this port on this IP address. We see that from the device settings. You, you can see how OSC is enabled for uh, this address, which is the IP of my computer. Okay, so over here, we um, are now connected and if I press uh, this button, you can see that I'm receiving messages. This is consistent with whatever was on button number one, you see that I'm sending the pass string zero and so on. If I press button number eight, it's the same thing. We see button number eight is revealing its pass string, which was over here. Uh, pass string number seven, if we scroll down, we can see and uh, that this string is found in row number eight and that is what is sent out. But what I wanna do now is to change um, button number one. So instead of sending a string, sending a binary message, and it is still now related to pass string number zero. Uh, let's, let's just keep that. It means that it's going to send um, Q1 go out. In other words, the one that was found in the first row. But you'll see the value is different. So let's just save this. It is immediately saved to the controller now. And if I go over to protocol and press this button, you see instead we are receiving a one or zero. And that depends a little bit on how this is picked up in the other end. So it just goes to show that there's flexibility in how you can set these commands up in the Skahoy controller through uh, the web interface. One thing I want to note, the labels you see in the displays are currently showing the queue being sent. That is great for debugging. Like you can also have protocol show you what is actually being sent. You want to have a window into the commands going forth and back. That's great. But for applications, it is likely that you want the name of your, um, uh, your sound effect or something else, which uh, we have not implemented or may not be able to pick up from the application. We don't know. We are basically one way sending these messages out. But if you look at the configuration here, you can see that the label in the controller depends on w which option you select here. You can either show the beginning of your, of your um, path going out on the message, the address, or you can show the end of it, or you can use a string as a label, and then you can select the label here. And that is exactly as you have seen in other Skahoy videos, where we demonstrate how you can enter labels into the um, configuration of the device, and then have them shown on the display to label the buttons and knobs and functions that you are applying. So of course you can do that. Now, the final thing that is interesting is, where do these commands come from? Now, that depends on your application, in this case, QLab. So there's no uh, point in us trying to share a number of strings because it depends on the application. So you go to the QLab API and uh, it looks pretty much like this. And here you begin to see that what we have so far seen actually makes sense. You can see that there's a command named Q slash number and then that corresponds very much to what we have seen here, namely Q and then number in curly braces. And then in addition to this one, there's a number of, um, uh, let me see, um, methods that define what is gonna happen because Q number really just addresses the particular Q that we, we had in, in QLab, the eight uh, sound effects we had there. So, um, um, what you saw from, um, from the list in the configuration is that we are using two, um, let's call them modifiers, but that is after the, the Q and the number, we have slash go or slash stop. And those also come out of the documentation. So if, if I just do this quickly and search for slash go, you can see that we have, we have here a number of commands that we can be working with. And one of them is, is slash go and slash stop. So this is all stuff that you need to read out of the particular documentation for the uh, audio console or the software application that you wanna control using OSC messages from your Skahoy controller.